And I say welcome to Flipside with yours sincerely, Oloi J. Oikokai. Today on Flipside, we'll be talking about poverty eradication 2022. Yes, there should be a hashtag on it, poverty eradication 2022. All right, on Monday, the international body, international community decided to beam a searchlight into poverty. How Poverty can be eradicated from our society, from our country, from our community, from everywhere. Now, um, yes, our guest today is a person of destiny, Iwobo. Mr. Destiny, good afternoon. Good afternoon. And nice seeing you. I'm excited. Um, there is a saying that um, the root of, uh, the love of money is the root of all evil. Yeah. Now, you said something again that um, the lack of money is more evil. Is more evil. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, beaming the searchlight into the International Day of the Eradication of Poverty, do you believe that over time, because we know that a particular day has been set, and in notifying everyone that they should try their possible best to come out of poverty? Yeah. Now, do you feel that over time, over years, that these education, this um, beaming the such light into poverty, um, there has been a way forward. Has there been a, a change in the pattern of living? Has there been a success in um, the fact that the way people live, has there been a way out of this whole problem as far as um, eradicating poverty from individuals, from communities, from the society? Yeah, uh, globally, there, there has been uh, a progress yeah. in uh, poverty eradication. Mm. Um, I, I think the part, the part the people have problem with now is extreme poverty. Extreme. Um, so poverty generally, uh, the, the world is getting richer mm. and um, a lot of countries that were formerly called poor mm. are now becoming emerging societies. Okay. okay uh, 1970, over 1 1.2 billion people were poor. By 1990, about 900 million people were poor. Mm. But by today, it's about 700 million people. And half of these people are in Africa. So the poverty we are talking about is extreme poverty. Okay. The type that uh, cripples people to a point mm. that they lost their personal dignity, mm. lost access to health care, education, yeah. Yeah. basic things of life. You know? So uh, poverty is a global problem. But generally, the, we the wealth of the world is becoming dissipated. Globalization has made it easy for people to get access to a lot of goods. The quality of life has generally improved globally. Mm. But some countries are not catching this uh, this this. Yeah. Okay, so countries are not catching this progress. So the, the poverty focus is on why these countries, especially in sub-Saharan Africa, mm. where we belong, uh, why are they, why are they refuse to take off from poverty? Uh, because if we look at it, Nigeria currently has more poor people than any country in the world. Okay, uh, China has 1.7 billion people, and they don't have up to 100 million people that are poor. Mm. India has 1.4 billion people; they don't have more than 50 million people that are poor. Nigeria has 206 to 10 million people, and 90 million Nigerians are poor. So the, the, we are looking at proportion of poor people in the country. Yeah. So like, like I said, it's, it's a problem, especially for us developing countries. Why have we refused to go, get out of poverty? Mm. Okay, why have we refused to, uh, to make progress like other nations of the world? Okay, China was poor in 1960. Singapore was poor in 1960. Malaysia was poor in 1960. Dubai did not even exist in 1960. Okay, India, very poor. Brazil, poor. But this is 2022. Yeah. Brazil is emerging economy, becoming a superpower. China, a superpowered country. Singapore, first rated country, one of the richest in the world right now. Mm. Malaysia has taken off 15 years ago. Okay. Other countries have taken off, but Nigeria has made no tangible pro progress when it comes to poverty. Mm. So poverty is a serious problem. That to the point that half of Nigerian population have no access to quality health care, no access to education, no access to, to dignity of person, mm -hmm. no access to basic things that yeah. people find it easy to access in the rest of the world. So it's a problem, but not a global problem per se. It's more of an African third world problem. All right. So the theme for this year is dignity for all in practice. Now, like you actually said, now taking a look at dignity for all in practice. Yeah. Now, someone that is, um, like we, you uh, earlier said, 
extreme poverty. poverty. Yeah. Can that person actually stand in the face of tribulations, in the face of not having enough to provide for the family. Now, when others are talking, yeah. do you find such a person being able to contribute meaningfully in the society? Okay. Uh, basically, uh, we, we are in a money-denominated world. Mm, the rich are getting richer, yeah. the poor are getting poorer. Yeah, what I mean is uh, mm. the, the currency of the world, yeah. the essence of value, it's the most visible forms of value yeah. is money mm. and what money can buy. Mm. So in, in a world where money plays a very important role, what people, we have different types of values. We have what's called the intrinsic value. Yeah. The intrinsic value as a human being is the value you have as a person. Okay? That one cannot be measured in money terms. Mm -hmm. But your, your exchange value is the value, the value you command in the marketplace, the value you command in the market for goods and services, mm -hmm. the value you command in the market for where you have to spend money. Yeah. So in that kind of world, they'll have polarized type of value then people who, who do not have currency, who do not have money, will lose the ability to negotiate their place in this world. Mm. Because you want to go to school, it's about mm. money. Sure. You want to travel abroad, it's money. Mm. You want to have quality life, money. You want to have goods to enjoy life, money, money, money. Sure. We do not live in the bad economy. We mm. live in a world denominated by money. money. So in such a world, anybody who lacks money or access to money, we lose the ability to negotiate his person. Okay. And that's what called loss of dignity. Okay? Loss of dig dignity comes when you are comparing yourself with other people. On your own, there's no basis for comparison. Yeah. But when you observe that you have children mm -hmm. and they have to go to school, mm -hmm. and then you have neighbors who who also have children, yeah. then they can afford to take their children to school, so but you can't schools. do that. It affects yeah. your self-esteem. Mm. Or other people have a job, but you don't have a job. Mm. And these people begin to see you as jobless. And People have assigned respect to people who are economically active. Yeah. So there's a direct relationship mm. between a person's access to finance and his dignity of person. No matter how much, how proud you are as a person, yeah. you are going to be diminished in value if mm. you cannot command the, uh, the marketplace, mm. if you cannot buy goods and services. Okay. In a materialistic world, when people are bombarded by images on television, images mm. of rich, mm. high flying people mm. living mm. the big life, yeah. flaunting cars and things like that, there's going to be social, psychological drama in the minds of people who do not have these things. Okay. And that, that we are uh, social beings, social animals, and so we, are, we tend to connect to people. No matter how much we think we are isolated, we are actually interdependent with each other. Mm. And so what happens is that if you cannot fit into the social construct of successful people, it takes the grace of God for you to maintain your sanity as a person, your dignity as a person, and your ability to communicate your values. Mm. And so we cannot separate poverty from loss of self-esteem. Yeah. We cannot separate loss of self-esteem from loss of self-dignity of a person. Mm. And so everything is connected, it's interconnected. If you also notice, there's a lot of poor people, I mean, uh, insane people roving the streets. Why do you think somebody will go insane? Mm. Half of insanity is caused by social dysfunction, inability to, to fit in the society. Into the society. A lot of people are becoming mad, mm. not because of anything else, because they cannot access basic health care, mental health care. Yeah. And most of them do not have social support system to help them solve problems. Mm. In some countries, when you lose your job, you can apply to the government, and then the government can give you social welfare packages True. until you get a job. Mm. Now, in a country when such things do not exist, and when we are living in a city life, when you lose your job, you are mm. on your own. And human beings are not designed to solve problems on their own. They are mm. designed to solve problems in connection with other people. Yeah. So lack of social, access to social uh, amenities, social, basic social welfare, mm -hmm. and lack of jobs, these things can lead to mental dysfunction. It can sure. cause people to lose their minds. Yeah. It can also lead to depression, where people decide to think there's no purpose in life. They want to take their lives. Mm. It can lead to so anti-social behavior, where people take to crime, mm. because they need to survive. True. It can also lead to juvenile delinquency. Mm. Young people have a lot of energies within them they want to explore. Mm. But when there's no job, what do they do? They get to crime. Mm. It can lead to drug abuse. It can lead to prostitution. We can keep counting the evils of poverty. And so when you said the love of money is the root of all evils, mm. people often say that. But what about the lack of money? The lack of money is a more dangerous evil than the, mm, love, than of the money. love of money. So we, we must stop looking at money as a bad thing, mm. but we should look at it from the perspective of what money can do. Can do, yeah. Okay? Money has power. Mm. It liberates you, makes you independent, makes mm. you to be able to emphasize yourself mm. and dictate the quality of your life. Mm. Lack of it is the opposite. Mm. And so that is why the world is focusing on 
eradicating poverty. poverty yeah. Because it has implications for democracy. Mm -hmm. For example, if you are poor, you're not likely going to be easily induced with money to vote for somebody. Mm -hmm. You notice in elections now, sometimes you see people as much as 500 naira they go and yeah, for somebody. True. What would cost that? That's mm. extreme poverty. Mm. The, in fact, attempting to bribe me to vote for you is the greatest insult to my personal dignity, for mm. instance. Mm. But a poor person does not see it like that. Mm. He's more interested in where the next bread will come from. Mm. And so, we should give him one turn to vote. Who cares about the government? In as much as I can get something, to, get something to, to, to eat, eat. That's what when I'm done from yes, the, the, the voting poll. Mm, mm. You know, it can force, it can make the, the, the electorate uh, marketable commodities you can go and buy mm. for the highest bidder. Mm. And that's not good for democracy. So you see that poverty has implications for welfare, mm. for sanity, for democracy, mm. for quality of life, and many things. You were talking about um, maternal mortality just now, yeah. child mortality. Yes, yes. Why do you think most women uh, give birth to premature babies, mm. or most women die during childbirth? Or even go, go to poor um, equipped hospitals? Because they don't have the resources. You go to a hospital that 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 is not clean, and they, they, they don't have professionals. Yeah. And then you, 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 what happens? You're on your own. Mm. So everything boils down to poverty. Mm. So it's a major problem. It's okay. a serious problem mm. and that people should not just talk about. Any any serious government should be making concrete effort to solve the poverty problem of its people. Mm. Because when people only are hungry, they only live for food. But when people have satisfied their hunger problems, they can dream. Yeah. They can build bigger mm. systems. They mm -hmm. can contribute. Live to for the future. Building. They can live for the future. Yeah. So we must eradicate extreme poverty mm. because that is a base. If you're able to solve that problem, people can naturally find their way around mm. the modern society. Okay. Now it's been said that um, eradication of poverty is a basic human right. Yes. Now some persons out there don't know that um, they need to, you know, pull out of poverty in order for them to be able to be meaningful yes. in the society. You find some persons who just be like, mm, as far as I have something to eat, mm. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Let's just look for another thing for the next day. Yeah. Now, do you feel that our government have like 101% to contribute yeah. in um, the, the way people live? Mm. And also, like you said, in the fact that we have extreme poverty. Yeah in our country, Nigeria. Now, you find people who now and then, every day, even as we are talking, there is this common lingua franca now, people will talk about, is the Jakba mm. issue. Mm -hmm. You find people live in the country like in this, in, 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 in the spate of time. Yeah. Now, I'm wondering, is it because they want to eradicate poverty? Mm. Is that the reason why they are, you know, finding greener pastures? Yeah. It's a basic human instinct to survive. Mm. Survivor is the first rule of man. Okay? And human beings will find a way to survive when, 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 when they are pushed to the wall. Yeah. The whole Jakba experience is very connected to the survivor thing. Yeah. Okay? People want to survive. People have a right to a quality life. Because you're finding people yes. saying, okay, I want to leave the shores of the, uh, our country, Nigeria, yes. and go to other country. Yes. Now, you're finding them say, oh, there are better healthcare service. Mm -hmm. When you're looking for a job, you don't need to scout too much for a job. Yeah. There's so many things that persons out there are talking about for the reason why they are leaving. Yes. Do you feel our government this way can actually inculcate those things? They are going out there for, and you know? Bringing them down to our country, Nigeria. You can find over there that, like, you have, like, four children. Mm -hmm. The government takes total responsibility. Like, oh, you have four children. Mm. I, I can take good care of them. But this way, you're, you're like, you have four children. And the government will be like, I don't know. Who, who yeah. asked you, you know? I think the government, is, uh, the government itself is facing the poverty problem. Mm. So we are looking at it from government. These governments you're talking about, they are very rich governments. You know, people run to places like the U.S. Mm. The U.S., the average income in the U.S. is $65,000, $22 trillion economy. The whole of Africa, the, the wealth of Africa, the GDP of Africa is $1.4 trillion. Mm. 1 trillion. Mm. That of the U.S. is $23 trillion. That means the U.S. is 22 times bigger, bigger. in economic size than Africa. Than so Africa, what they can yeah. afford is not, all African governments cannot afford it. Mm. Okay? That's number one. England, Canada, and other countries, these are first-rated countries. They are very advanced industrialized countries. So their governments are very rich. Mm. In fact, for the last 50 years, they've yeah. been giving loans to poor countries. They spent billions of dollars mm. to try to help poor countries 
We are not in that situation. Mm -hmm. The budget of Nigeria is just 45 to 50 billion dollars. Mm -hmm. That's not up to the budget of Apple, an American company. So the whole money we are talking about that government has to spend, mm -hmm. it's not up to the budget of Coca-Cola in US, one company. So you can imagine that. So the, our government itself is experiencing poverty. There's a lot of poverty. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a misnomer that the Nigerian government is rich. It's total nonsense. Nigeria is one of the poorest countries on earth. Mm. Why? Wealth cannot come from oil alone. Wealth comes from productivity of people. Mm. Okay, what is the productivity of the average Nigerian? What is the capacity to produce of the Nigerian? That's the question we would have asked. How many Nigerians are educated? 67% of Nigerians are educated. Mm. How many of these Nigerians are skilled? Not up to 5% of Nigerians are skilled people. Mm. Okay, now let's do the statistics for other countries. If you, those people that are jack buying, yes. uh, if you notice, they are the brightest Nigerians that are jack buying. Mm. For you to be able to get a visa to go to US or Canada, now you have to be a specialist. You have to work in a corporate organization for mm. some years. Yeah. You have to be well educated. Mm. It's not everybody they want there. So if you go to developed countries, intelligent people run that society. It's a knowledge based economy. Mm. Okay? Japan, literacy rate is 100%. Singapore, 100%. We are talking about ability to read and write. Yeah. So the question is, it's not true for Nigeria. Mm. What we have here is illiteracy, lack of skills. Mm. Look at the young people you see on the streets. How many of them are educated? How many pilots do we have? How many medical doctors do we have? How many software engineers do we have? Mm. How many rocket scientists do we have? How many biotechnologies do we have? We are talking about high level skills. Mm. We don't have those types. The kind of skills we have here are fixing with arms, um, making clothes. These Catering. are basic level skills. Yeah. What about the high level skills? Who will write our softwares? Mm. Who will create the next cars? Mm. Who will build the next airplanes? Who are those people? Who will build the cell phone that you're using? For instance, this cell phone may cost you about 100,000. Now, multiply 100,000 in the number of cell phones in this country and fly to China, where it is coming from. Mm. All the money we use to buy cell phones in this country, all of them fly to the developed world. Mm. Why don't we make it? How can we have 210 million people? We don't have a phone company in this country. We don't have a computer company in this country. We don't have car companies in this country. Mm. We don't like heavy industries because our government did not put policies in place for us to get you know, quality education. Okay? Now, when people get quality education, then they can develop wealth. So people have stopped talking about poverty alleviation in the developed world. What mm. they are talking about now is another term, which we call wealth creation. Mm. Now, poverty alleviation looks at it from the perspective that some people are poor, and so we have to take money from the rich and give to the poor. That's poverty alleviation. Mm. It's a very weak approach. There's something we call wealth creation. Wealth creation is developing people's competencies so that they can generate wealth mm. from themselves. Yeah. Okay? When you're able to empower people to develop wealth for themselves, mm. that is when poverty really goes away. In the process, new wealth is created, old wealth is restored. You don't have to rob Peter to, to pay, pay Paul. Yeah. Okay? That's the type of development policy the government needs to step in to produce. Mm. So the question is this. What is the human development index of Nigeria? What is our investment in healthcare? Mm. What's our investment in education? High level skilled education. Not yeah. all education mm. is equally made. Okay? One doctor and one um, bus conductor are not the same mm. in a society. Yeah. So what happens to our 65 million youths? What kind of education are we giving them? We need to give them real quality, mm. high-end mm. education. Yeah. This is the reason why. If they don't even get jobs in Nigeria, mm. these people can go abroad and get jobs related to their skills and send money back home, which we call remittances. Yeah. Remittances in the last budget was about 40 million dollars. $40 million Nigerians repatriating money home. Mm. That's only the official figures. Now imagine if we can generate $4 billion from remittances, sending doctors, pilots, engineers to the rest of the world. And then these people go there, they are not sweeping streets. They mm. are doing high level jobs. That's yeah. what India is doing. Mm. Anytime you see Indians in America, they are at the top level. Check Google. The top companies are run by Indians. Mm. High tech. Mm. And then what do they do with the money? They repatriate them home yeah. and build mega companies home. Mm, yeah. That's the government should have an agenda to shift Nigerians from poverty mentality to wealth creation mentality. That requires high level education. Mm. Not basic level education, high level. So these people are young now, are young people. Yeah. What do we do? What is the policy to educate them mm. in science and technology, in mathematics mm. and the sciences, in the core engineering? Mm. 
why don't we invest in basic engineering sciences in this country? Mm. Such that when we see a child grow up, I, I read an article the other day, a, a nine-year-old boy works for Google and earns $200 million a year. Mm. Nine year old. It is impossible if it was 70 mm. years ago. Yeah. But you know why? He's a software engineer at nine. And it doesn't matter if he have to build a house. He just to be able to get there. The, the, the house is in his head. Yeah. So when I read it, I, I started thinking, what mm. happened to these little boys that we are raising up in this country? Mm. They can learn things fast. Why don't we create software schools, coding schools, academies? Yeah. Why don't we create the type of education that is functional? Affordable, too. Affordable. Mm. If it is not affordable, that is mm. why we have a government. Mm. Government can fund it, subsidize yeah. that type yeah. of education. Mm. And let us have a policy of training at least 10 million youths in the next 10 years mm. in high-level skills. The multiplier effect is that these 10 million youths have families, and they are going to generate a lot of funds and help their families out of yeah, poverty. True. The policy of feeding people in school does not reduce poverty. Mm. It's a social palliative system. It's not a, it's not, it's a redundant way of removing wealth. Mm. In that policy, I disagree with the government. Social palliative economics is nonsense in mm. the modern world. What we need is wealth creation by developing adequate policies to ensure people get the right education, the right skill sets, and then the capabilities to convert these skill sets into business enterprises mm -hmm. that we employ thousands of people. Of persons, but there's yeah. a connection between poverty and unemployment. Mm. When people are poor, they cannot set up businesses. Mm -hmm. When they cannot set up businesses, they cannot have employment uh, uh, possibilities. Mm. But if you develop the minds of people potentials, then they can set up small ventures and hire people who think like them to generate the next corporations. Mm. So when are we going to have the next apples, the next Facebooks coming from Nigeria? Yeah. Luckily, recently, Nigeria has been doing well in terms of this area. If you check modern companies, software companies, they are now owned by Nigerians, mm. many of them. So we should move towards that direction. I do believe that the wealth of the world will shift towards Africa in the next 30, 40 years. This is the reason why. Africa has the population to support the demand of the West. Mm. With 1.3 billion people, Africa is a marketplace that is untapped. And how do we tap into that marketplace power? Yeah. We educate our people such that when the wealth, when the world wants to come and make investments in Africa, mm. that investment does not come and fly back to them. It comes and we house it through our intellect. We hold such investment, localize it, and spread it wide. Okay. Okay. That's what mm. happened to China. That's what happened mm. to many countries. Those are the things which our government should be looking at. Okay. So we're looking at developing policies to empower the people mm. to up their mental capacities and then convert it into tangible wealth. Okay. That but, is wealth creation. Mm, that is the mm. But we can still um, see that some of our persons here, when they go out of the country, they do marvelously well. Yes. In terms of education, software development, and everything. Yes. So are we saying the fact that, is it because of maybe the standard of living mm. over there, that's the reason why they can actually strive? Yeah. Or... Is it because maybe back here they don't have enough encouragement yeah. and all of that? Yeah, the system works. Mm. You know, it, what, what government does, actually, government does not create wealth anywhere in the world. Government is a referee yeah. that ensures that the rules are followed. Mm. Okay? Government is a referee. When you look at it from that perspective, it is up to the boxers to go and train how to box. Okay. Now, government ensures that the rules are fair, okay. the rules are simple, yeah. the laws are enforceable to ensure that people understand the rules and play within it. Mm. Now, if people, if the rules are well organized, okay, yeah. then people find it easy to try in an organized setting. Mm. Are you getting the point? Mm -hmm. So most Nigerians want to succeed in this country, but the country itself is chaotic. In other words, the rules are not uniform. Somebody gets arrested for a crime, if he's a rich man, he goes out free. If he's a poor man, he stays there for life. Okay? Mm -hmm. Somebody wants to get education, if he's a rich man, he gets quality education. If he's a poor man, he gets nothing. Yeah. But these rules have been settled abroad. Mm -hmm. Are you getting the point that yeah. the rules are there? So Nigerians, in fact, are one of the brightest people on earth. I'll mm -hmm. give you statistics about Nigerians. In America, Nigerians are the most educated immigrant group. Mm -hmm. We have more PhDs. For every Nigerian, they have nine to hundred. For every 100 Nigerians in America, mm -hmm. nine are PhDs, mm -hmm. the highest in the world. That means Nigerians are can do people. Yeah. They just need a system that works, that works where yeah. they can explore their mm -hmm. potential. Mm -hmm. I have a, 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 an auntie who, who could not read when she was in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. When she got abroad, she a, asked questions and saw that uh, wow. the, the people there, they, they value education a mm -hmm. lot. Yeah. Guess what she did? 
the doctor that treated her because she went there because she was not feeling fine. Mm. The doctor that treated her was an Igbo boy, okay. twenty-three yeah. year old Igbo, old Igbo boy. And mm -hmm. said, "What did you do to become so successful?" I said, yeah. "You got to school." Mm. At forty, she went back to school, wow. and she says she wants to become a medical doctor. Mm. She says everything is possible. Everything works. Okay. You can't go to afternoon school. You go to night school. Okay. And now she's upping her game. Oh. In other words, but while she was in Nigeria, she didn't have any need to go to school. Mm. Going to school here. That 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 um, push wasn't, wasn't there. Wasn't there. But mm. the system works. Mm. When the system works, you can say you can up your game. Mm. So it's not as if if you get to Canada or the US, mm. money is where they don't mm. block money on trees. Yeah. But what you do is when you get there, you ask questions around. Can mm. you better yourself? The road is smooth, mm. it's clear. Mm. The rules are not discriminatory. Okay. Okay. Mm. You imagine if you go to the US parliament, you're going to see Nigerians mm. there. You can imagine you can rise to become a politician okay. in I, another country. Okay, I, I'll stop you here. It's let's let, okay, okay, let's quickly go on a short break. We'll be right back. All right, thank you so much for joining us on Flipside. And today we're looking at the eradication of poverty and um, destiny. Wobo is here with us. Now, before we go over to destiny, Wobo, quickly now, 9.9% um, of people um, globally are affected by hunger, which has been worsened by global food crisis. Yes, we know that. Um, as a result of some persons already blaming it on flooding in um, the northern part and also um, in the River Rhine region. Now, we have um, 149 million children worldwide. About one to five are chronically malnourished, malnourished, yes. They are malnourished due to lack of good food yeah. and all of that. Now, this boils down to the fact that um, like you said, extreme poverty. Yeah. Now, 3.1 million children worldwide die from undernutrition oh. each year. Oh. Now, what's the way forward? How can this um, percentage be reduced in the next, um, the next time we're talking about eradication of poverty? How can we find children getting more um satisfied as far as um, good food yeah. not getting malnourished getting the right things they need to have like shelter um education and also clothing you find lots of them wearing tattered clothes everywhere and you're wondering what is happening to their parents so how can we get past this okay uh, it's a it's a multiple problem Mm. So you need to solve it from multiple perspectives. There are the institutional causes of poverty. That one is government and institutions. Mm. Okay? Like I said, government needs to take the problem seriously and ensure that the rule of law, the justice system, the business registration system to encourage mm. people to bring money to this country. Mm -hmm. Government needs to do that one very well. Then we'll have what we call the sociological factors, yeah. people's beliefs and cultural patterns. There are some cultures that encourage poverty. Wow. Yes. It's, yeah. In fact, most of the poverty in Africa is culturally related. Mm. I'll give you an example. Africans find it easy to borrow money to do a burial ceremony, mm. but will not borrow the same money to do business, for instance. Mm. Africans find it easy to spend 10 million on their wedding, but will not spend 10 million on their marriage. Mm. We like beginnings and ending of things. We don't like processes. Mm. Okay? And so we like the sample mentality. We like to show people that we sure. are alive. Yeah. Okay? But Europeans do not think like that. They value the process itself. Why we value the end result, how people perceive it. Mm. That's a cultural problem. Africans call children wealth or more FA, those kind of ideas. Yeah. Uh, but th th that's not that's not wealth in the modern world. Mm. It is the quality of education or the quality of life for the children that mm. is wealth. Mm. For example, in Japan, their population is declining. They don't want to have children anymore. Mm. So if you have a child in Japan, you take them to the best school. Schools. And then this child mm. grows up and gets another one child. Mm. And so that policy ensures that every living Japanese is enjoying a certain standard of life. Okay. But an average Nigerian has between four to ten children. Mm. Now, with that amount of children, what will happen to the funds to run education. You want to give your children education. You don't want it cost to take a child to school. Now, basic education, you need to spend about 200000 to enroll them in school. Mm. Now, if your minimum wage is 50000 naira a month and you have 10 children, what quality of life, what quality of life can you give those kids? 
Mm. You have 10 children and you earn 50,000 naira a month. Mm. You can't give what you don't have. Mm. That's, a, that's a sociological problem. Number three, in the, in the Western countries, they believe for collaboration, partnerships. Okay? Now, if I, if I don't have resources, okay, and I want to go into business, in developed countries, I can simply trust people, what you call the Protestant ethic. Mm. In developed countries, there's enterprise spirit, mm -hmm. such that if I don't have resources, mm. I can join my skills with somebody else. With another, yeah. I can do business. Mm. For that to happen, there must be a system of trust and work ethic. Mm. This is, we are not talking about money now. Yes. We're talking about just trust and work ethic. Now, try and do business with a fellow Nigerian. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the Nigerian sees a business as a place where you go and you sap. Mm. We say now we have person they work now, in nature. We say now workshop. <laughs> you are working for somebody. You steal the person you drive. Mm -hmm. You see the business place as a place where you go and shop. Mm. You don't see it as a place where you go and produce. Where you, you go and where, where you go to siphon work. siphon money. So good in mm. such a country, if you set up businesses, they will lick it dry. Mm. You have not asked why all the companies in Nigeria are failing. Nitel failed. NNPC failing. Nigerian Railway Corporation failing. Mm. You know why? It is not government. It's the people's mentality. They don't have the mentality of production. Okay? Whereas in China, the biggest oil company is owned by government. Mm. In Dubai, it is owned by government. In Saudi Arabia, it is owned by government, employing thousands of people, well-run organizations. But in Nigeria, all government organizations are poorly run mm. because there's, an, there's, there's a way we think in this part of the world. So sociological problems, religious problems too. Research shows that countries that are over-religious are also over-poor. Mm. There's a high correlation between religiosity and poverty. Mm. In fact, of the top 10 country, richest countries in the world, of the top 10 richest countries in the world, none of them, they are irreligious countries. Mm. In other words, religion gives people what we call the external locus of control. What that means is that God will do it. Mm. When there are bad roads, we will pray, may God do it. Yes. When, when you give birth to 25 children, God will take care of them. Nigerians are known for we praying. We are known for those kind mm. of uh, ideas. Such yeah. ideas are poverty-induced. Mm. The reason is because you, you, uh, you, you, take, you take actions, but you want God to handle the responsibilities. Mm. God did not give you 10 children, for instance. You, you, by your physical action, you had 10 children. Yeah. But you did not make effort to produce money to take care of those children. Then when it gets to that point, you say, God will take care of them. Mm. When God says you should fill the earth, he gave you, you, you have to be responsible about that duty. Yes. Fill the earth. He wasn't talking about only you. <laughs> he said, you might should fill the earth. But some people believe it's a blessing to have 85 children <laughs> that they cannot you. take care of. Right? Yes. So these are sociological factors, mm. the way people think. Yeah. Now, in countries where people have responsibility, cause effect, they see their destiny in their hands. Mm. So when the road is bad, they call the government to order. When they see their finances are not getting straight, they restrain their Themselves. procreative abilities. Yeah. And yeah. my wife, come, <laughs> we can't mm. afford it. Let's have two children, it's okay. Sure. They are responsible. Yeah. They tie their successes and failures to their actions and inactions. Mm. Why in countries that are religious, they look for somebody to blame? If things are going well, God. Things are going poorly, devil mm. and villagers. Mm. Such dualistic way of looking at life is redundant, is ignorant. So that's sociology. Yeah. That's not government here. Yeah. So question, people who believe that they can change their situation mm. often come out with solutions to solve the problem or ask questions on how to solve the problem. Mm. People who believe that life is by faith, destiny, anything can happen. Whatever person go drink, he must drink and yeah. such nonsense ideas. Yeah. It makes them lazy, mm. makes them irresponsible, okay? Yeah. I mean, it's like a person telling you, it doesn't matter how many bottles you drink, mm. who will die from alcohol, will die from okay. alcohol, mm. and then take 12, 15 bottles. Of course, some people live long taking 12, 15 bottles every day, mm. but are we not reading news, news of people who took alcohol and entered the vehicle and died? Yeah. So some people learn to live stochastic lives, I mean lives on randoms, ideas like that, mm. especially in Africa. We tend to interpret our world from a cosmic perspective instead of rational solutions to problems. Focus on the so situation. On the yeah. If a white man does not have a job, mm. you say, I don't have a job. Look at yeah. what they do. Yeah. Get a skill. Mm. When you get a skill, you solve a problem. There's no other solution. Get busy. Get busy. Mm. Get an education. Are, are yeah. you educated? I don't, I'm not educated. Can you, can you paint cars? Mm. I, I don't know how to do that. Oh, yeah. 
go and learn how to paint cars. Mm. They are skill oriented. A black man will go and pray and be praying that God should change the situation <laughs> and be singing songs like My Helper, My Helper. <laughs> I mean, such your helper. Yeah. Were you not made to help people too? Mm -hmm. Why do you always look at the world from the order side? Why yeah. not me to out? So these are the issues, mm -hmm. and that requires cultural revolution. Mm. The way people think, and why do people think that way? They are not properly educated. They don't know what's happening else in the world. Mm -hmm. and so they tend to have these nihilistic personalities, ideas that kill you in the long run. Mm. That's another solution. So I looked at the government perspective. I looked at the person factor. Then we have also have another factor. The other factor has not to do with government. It has not to do with the people. It just has a lot to do with the environmental factors. Okay. For example, flooding mm. and things that are causing problems for the farmers. Yeah. These are ecological problems that you cannot blame the government entirely for because the water levels are increasing. Global warming is causing more problems. So but what government can do is to take action. Mm -hmm. Government can take action. But the one presently, um, you know, ravaging the, the country yes. and in some parts of the country, who is the, who is the cause? Do you blame people for acts of nature? We don't look at it from a cost perspective. They mm. call them acts of God. Mm. There's heavy rain and then yeah. there's flooding. Yeah. What that means is that the government should take the issue of infrastructure seriously mm. and create networks. To now, it's, been, it's been said that over time, um, the government has... Um, okay, now, the Cameroonian government yes. has actually spoken to a Nigerian government yes. to actually get a dam. Now, that has been built halfway. Okay. And right now, the flooding issue has become imminent in the society. Yes. You find people losing their homes. Some persons have died. Some persons are homeless right now. Yeah. And lots of things are actually happening. Now, if the government can actually take responsibility for their own action, yes. I think things will be better in our country, Nigeria. Yeah, that's what we are talking about. Now, the government is not being able to take those actions. Yeah. The government itself is poor. I told you that. Mm. To do such a damn system nowadays is very expensive without the expertise, without the resources. Yeah. If you check the news, Nigeria will be borrowing 40 trillion debt. Mm. These are heavy duty projects. The government it does not have money to eradicate poverty. It does not have money to build dams and those kind of things. We are always borrowing. That's why I said the solution is a long term solution. Mm. What do we do? We can't do it alone. So we need to create our system, our economy in a way that it attracts investors. Yeah. Investors come to this country, they'll pay mm. taxes, mm. they'll create jobs and other things. What government needs to do is the small resources that we have, we manage it to solve the problems that ensure that people are able to jump out of poverty. Okay. Like I said, one government cannot solve the problem of 200 all. million people. Yeah. Mm. We can't always be blaming government. Mm. Each of us are government in our small lives. Mm. So what government needs to do is to empower, to empower individual family governments, mm -hmm. to empower themselves. Mm. Government cannot be seen as the source. Government can only play the field okay. to ensure that things are smooth enough for people to up their game. All right. Yeah. Okay, guys, um, if you just joined us, this is Flipside with Olui J. Oikokai. We'll be right back after this short break. All right, thank you so much for joining us. Now, um, someone actually said poverty and inequality are inevitable. Mm. How true is that? It's not true. Okay. They are not inevitable. Inevitable will mean that you cannot solve the problem. Mm. In inequality is the gap between the rich and the poor. And the poor. What we can always have is we always have rich people, we always have poor, poor people. people yeah. But inequality is you are saying that there's not going to be a middle class. What is happening in developed countries is that people are moving from poverty to the middle class. Mm. Whereas in poorer countries, the middle class is vanishing. So we now have two classes the very the rich, rich and, and the, the poor. poor. So inequality can be bridged mm. or it can be made worsened. That depends on what is happening, what the government is doing, what the people are doing to solve the problem. Okay. okay so it's not mm. inevitable. It okay. can be solved. All right. Okay. It, ha it can definitely be solved. Yes, it can. Okay. All right. So let's quickly go now for um, a short video clip by the United um, the Nations. Yes. Um, talking about eradication of poverty. We'll be right back. As we mark the International Day for the Eradication of Poverty, we face a harsh truth. The world is moving backwards. COVID-19 plunged millions into poverty, setting back more than 40 years of hard-won progress. Inequalities are widening. 
national and household economies are battered by job losses, skyrocketing food and energy prices, and the gathering shadows of a global recession. At the same time, the climate crisis and raging conflicts are causing immense suffering with the poorest people bearing the brunt. Developing countries are being squeezed dry, denied access to resources and debt relief to invest in recovery and growth. Sustainable development goals are being pushed far out of reach. The International Day for Eradication of Poverty is a wake-up call to the world. This year's theme, Dignity for All in Practice, must be a rallying cry for urgent global action. Action to invest in people-centered solutions, from health and decent work to gender equality, social protection, and transformed food and education systems. Action to transform a morally bankrupt global financial system and ensure access to financing and debt relief for all countries. Action to support developing countries as they transition from planet-killing fossil fuels to renewable energy and job-creating job green economies. And to action to end conflicts, heal geopolitical divisions and pursue peace. And action to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. On this important day, let us renew our commitment to a better world for all. Let us consign poverty to the pages of history. All right, looking at um, COVID-19. Now, people still, in fact, today someone was actually talking about how COVID-19 has, you know, destroyed a lot of things. Let me use that word, destroyed a lot of things. Plans, um, investments, companies, and all of that. So I want to understand, um, COVID-19 happened um, 2021 yeah. or, or thereabouts, 2020, 2021. Now, um, by now, don't you feel that people would have been able to you know, stand their ground and um, getting out of the whole issue of COVID-19? Yeah, it should, it should be. It's a, it was a global problem. Yeah. Uh, it takes time to adjust. Okay. It, it, Apart from COVID-19, mm. uh, COVID-19 created what's called supply shortages. Mm. People were at home for so many years, production sure. plants were shut down. Yeah. And so when the world got back to business, supply has not been able to catch up to demand. Mm. So what's happening, that's why the prices are going up. Okay. And secondly, the Russia-Ukraine war. True. Is yes, I was actually going to. Mm. Energy is an important input in the entire production mm. chain. Mm. Mm. And so when there's a problem with the energy, prices all those are affected sorry for cutting you short you know yes. funny you know a lot of persons um, did not know that russia and ukraine had um a strong power yeah. in the war system yes not until the issue between these two great countries yes. started yes. Mm. Russia supplies over 60 percent of the entire gas needs of Europe. Yeah. So if, if Russia is in a war, mm. Europe gas supplies will drop. Yeah. So that's the impact of uh, Russia. Mm. And so these these effects are affecting the global economy. The world is not globalized. Mm. Any shock somewhere in the, in the it, world, it affects. It comes to Nigeria. Yeah. And Nigeria too is also facing our problems. Yeah, mm. Our theft. Mm. Our barrel. Uh, 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 Focus is supposed to be 1.8 million barrels, yeah. our quota. But now, for, because of air theft, mm. over 700 million barrels, I mean 700,000 barrels are stolen uh, yeah. every, every, every day in Nigeria. Mm. And so that has hampered the federal government's ability to generate more funds. So we are being bombarded by global forces and local forces. Mm. Okay? Mm. Shortfall in revenue, high debt profile, mm. weak exchange rate, mm. high cost of living. So everything is just, it's like Nigerians are in a cooking pot mm. and the heat is being turned on every five, five seconds. Mm -hmm. Such that, uh, that's why you are seeing the Jack Bar syndrome. Mm. Uh, the country is getting warmer and warmer, hotter and hotter. You know, you go and buy bread today, by next week it has become it has another thing. So yeah. Nigerians are, these are uncertain times. The expectations are weak. Mm. And so that is what is happening now. But there's no reason to think that you continue forever. Uh, because um, the Russian issue, is being is being washed. Mm. Uh, OPEC is trying to respond to the oil supply yeah. issue, and then small small it can take. Uh, like I said, somebody an economist says something. The mm. COVID nineteen will hit the world for at least six to seven years. So this is just the second year. Yeah. So I think the world is going to still suffer for another three or four years. Mm. Mind you, these problems are not only affecting Nigeria. Mm. It's Even a global a global change. Yeah. Have increased. Yeah. Inflation rate is high. Unemployment rate is high in some countries, mm. low in other countries. Mm. So it's a global problem. Mm. So what our problem is, is 
how does Nigeria fare within the global macroeconomics? Yeah. Okay, uh, what are we do, holding our own end properly? Mm. What are we doing to our price level, to our exchange rate, mm. to others? And Nigerians are in the weak end of the bargain. Why? We are not a productive economy. We don't produce anything of what in the world apart from crude oil. Mm. And so when anything happens externally, we inherit it. But if Nigeria was a major producer, export yeah. producer, then we'll be able to hedge some of these shocks. But we are just lying down, mm. waiting for the world to come and buy only oil. Mm. What happened to other products? What happened to en energy? What happened to chemicals? What happened to uh, coal? To coal, and, yeah. I mean to buildings. Mm. What happened to banking? There are mm. other sectors of the economy that we can. What happened to tourism? Yeah. Why are we not taking advantage of the, uh, the potentials of mm. this country? Mm. That is why we need a government. Mm. And that is why, come February, Nigerians should be wise when mm. they choose their leaders. Mm. They should choose a leader that has the education, that has the emotional intelligence to feel the pain of Nigerians. We need a leader that has the ability for strategic thinking, yeah. somebody that can see 10, 15 years from now. We need a leader that understands the enormity of our challenges mm -hmm. and has the capacity and the tenacity and the will to see that there are, there's a major shift in the way things are done. Mm. We don't need a leader that is a status quo leader. We need a leader that has a turnaround mentality, mm. a leader that's a visioner, mm. a person that can look at this country in total and create a transformational change. Such leaders is what we should be looking at. We should not stop talking about money and uh, other redundant discussions. Yeah. We should focus on personalities, mm. people mm. that have the capacity to deliver to, to change. Move, move the country to, to the, the country next from level. Point a to point B. Yeah. Because as we speak now, we are in a dire strait, mm. a very difficult time. We don't need a leader that will be telling us the same old stories. Mm. We need a leader that will see the problem and okay. be willing to solve those problems head on. All right. And um, before we leave now, quickly, um, our advice to the government, yeah. parents, now, because you did talk about um, child bearing, mm. how a family would just come out, okay, let's have like five, six, mm. seven, without even checking your income, your resources. your resources, now, and to individuals also. Yeah. For the government, government must develop a policy yeah. uh, to ensure that that is inclusive, a policy to bring a lot of people into the economy. Because currently, a lot of people are not in the economy. Mm. They are scattered. So we need to create policies that encourage people to collaborate and pull resources together and go into business and make more money mm. from the government side. That ensures that they must protect property rights. There must be rule of law. Mm. They must also ensure that there is, it's easy to start, set up businesses, yeah. remove corruption from the government. Corruption causes problems in this country. We mm. need to fight it. Mm. Insecurity, these are things that hurt business community. Yeah. Then from the Person factor, our people at home should be taught that a man should be responsible for his, his actions. actions. On childbearing, we should give it to children we can take care of. Mm. Okay? On education, we must invest where our mouth is. The biggest investment you can give to your children is education. Education. Skill attainment. You must position them to be able to generate income for themselves. Mm. Never give up children, give it to children and be saying God has blessed you. The children are not yet blessed until they get out of poverty mm. and be able to fend for themselves. That's for the family issue. Yeah. Then for the economic and sociological issues, the way we think in this part of the world, we must understand that when God gives us a country and mm. gives us abilities and talents, this is in the Bible too. He judges us on the ability to profit from those talents, mm. not having the talents themselves. And, and just keep them. Okay, the story of the talents mm. was about a man who was giving talents. And when the master came, he said, how much do you have? And then the mother doubled. He gave him an appointment. Yeah. Okay. Mm. What about the one that had only one coin and went to bury it? Mm. That means God is enterprising. He believes in enterprise. The crime the guy committed was not being able to turn his abilities to something tangible. And then he was punished for that. Yeah. So God does not just give us abilities. He gives us the ability to use those abilities to generate something worthwhile. So please, our people at home, nobody is born entirely poor. Everybody comes with a set, a skill set or a level of uh, capabilities. All we need to do is to find a way to explore how to use these capabilities to make our life better and to even enrich people around us. We must stop this beggar their neighbor mentality. Mm. God will do it, God will do it, and those kind of ideas, they make people poor. Yeah. There's a, there are lots of research that says that there's a direct relationship between what people think and their ability to get out of poverty. 
So we must up our games. We must be responsible for the things we do okay. so that we get out of poverty. All right. We must up our games and definitely know that our destiny lies in our hands. Go do something meaningful for yourself and your society. In order for you to look back next year when we are celebrating another day concerning poverty eradication.